Hello, everybody out there. And uh, Jim Staley here. This is going to be rough. No question. <clears throat> Not too long ago, I received... Uh, I received um, news that Rob has passed away, and uh, that's a really hard place for me. So you're just going to have to put up with me for a few minutes because this is going to be kind of a little bit of my therapy as well. And maybe uh, maybe for those that loved Rob. Uh, we'll, a few minutes here, we'll, we'll be therapy for all of us. Can we, can we agree to that? You know, first and foremost, I want to, um, just start off in a prayer, I think. Probably a good place to be. Father, just come before you. I want to thank you, God, that we can trust you. I want to thank you, Father, that when the waves of the sea start to come over our heads, Father, they start to threaten our very life existence. At the moment, Father, of our greatest fears, coming to life you are right there to calm the sea that's inside of every one of us so father even though my heart is sad even broken God over the loss of a friend a loved one a patriot My heart is jealous in some ways, Father, that he is in your presence, feeling your power, your glory, your light, experiencing the wonders of everything that he's wondered about. What a privilege it would be, Lord, to be in your presence for just a moment. Rob gets to be in your presence for his new lifetime. So I pray, Father, that this will not be a time of, of sorrow only, but that we would remember, Father, that joy comes in the morning. It always comes in the morning. I remember my own sorrow, waiting for the moment that joy would come, and it did. It always does. For your children of faith that walk not by sight, but by your spirit, joy always comes in the morning. So Father, may this time be a moment spent to remember that joy comes in the morning. And you are always with us through the night. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just encourage you that God has never left his throne. He never leaves it. He never forsakes us. It doesn't matter where people, where we're at, where we think we're at. The Father knows what's best. 
I rest uh, in a surety and in peace that his ways are higher than ours. So let me just encourage all of you out there to not question or ask why. It's not our job. To ask why is is to doubt the benevolence of God. What do I mean by that? What's the benevolence of God? We say all the time that God is good and God is good all the time, right? Well, moments like this, it's hard to feel like God is good. It's hard to understand that God is good. Especially if you know some of the things that that I know in the last few months that of Rob's life that he shared with me. I can just tell you this man is a good man. He was a good man. He had a good heart. And his desire was to serve the Lord God with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you know what? Sometimes we all can find ourselves in hard places. Rob was a man that um, wouldn't quit. He uh, he wanted so bad to feel Holy Spirit working in his life again. <laughs> I don't think he realized how soon that would happen. But you know what? God is 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 benevolent. Yahweh is is always good. And like I said, it's at moment like moments like this where we struggle with trying to decide how to fit this life into our theology instead of taking his character and promises and fitting them into our life. You see, we're all good at at believing God, claiming his promises. But when catastrophe happens, when the unexpected hits you in the face and knocks you over and takes the breath out of your lungs. It's not so much about theology anymore. It's about the testing of your theology. And I believe that's where we're at right now. You see, there's two people in every single one of us. You have the Jim Staley that you're looking at right now, and then there's the inner man that's on the inside that you can't see. And my friends, this is that spirit man Paul talks about. It's supposed to be built up in Messiah. It's supposed to be increased. And it doesn't get increased through anything other than the fruit of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit. It's when we share with our fellow man the love that we have for God. And for all of you people out there that believe in the front of the book, let's not forget about the back of the book. It didn't end in the front, you guys. It ends in the back. It ends with Yeshua saying in Revelation, You've forgotten your first love. Don't become haughty because of what you think you know. It ain't about what you think you know. You know what it's about? It's about sacrifice and obedience working together. It's about love and spirit and truth operating like a three-stranded cord. It's about laying down your life for your friend. It's about loving that guy or that girl or that woman or that employer that did you wrong. It's about letting go of the past and embracing your future. And you can't embrace your future until you embrace your now. 
And right now, my friends, this is where we're at. I put forth a motion in the, in the biblical courts a few hours ago. Many of you were online when we did. And you know what the Father did? He didn't grant that motion. He granted the enemy's motion. And you know, there's only three answers that the Spirit gives. It's either yes, it's either no, or it's wait. And the Father quickly answered with a no. And you know what that means? Because God is more concerned about His image and His kingdom and is more concerned about you and me and everybody that doesn't even know Him yet. That He looked down at this motion and He made the hard choice to bring Rob home. You know why? It's nobody's fault. You see, Rob told me some things about how badly he wanted to serve God in a new way. How he wanted to grow the kingdom. <laughs> and you know what I believe? I believe our king heard that cry and he heard that prayer, that humble prayer, Father, give me back my first love. Help me to increase your kingdom. And the father looked at the eternal matrix and he said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it cannot produce. But if it, oh, but if it falls, it will produce a hundred, a thousand, even an infinite fold. <coughs> and I believe that the Father looked down and said, I will increase my kingdom with this man this way far more than I will increase my kingdom his way you know oftentimes we don't get to choose our path I certainly didn't get to choose mine many of you didn't get to choose yours that doesn't mean we make perfect choices it just means that those choices come and you make those choices and and later you realize that maybe you should have made a different choice but ultimately if you've dedicated your heart to the father and you truly want to see his kingdom come in his glory. You know what we got to do. We got to submit to his will in such a way that, um, that we're okay with whatever he wants to do. That we're okay. Did you hear what I said? That we're okay with whatever he wants to do. And sometimes what he wants to do is not what we want to do. And that's the test of a true soldier. It's the test of the spirit man that's inside of you. You see, there's a reason why God calls us to talk to him every day, to read his word, to spend time with him. Commandments to keep, show our love. But ultimately, what's the end game? Why does he want us to do all that? Just so that we can, we can, he can feel loved. Does God really need to feel our love? No. You see, this is a, this is a war. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and powers of this present darkness. The Father knows that. So all the time that we spend with Him and all the time we put into learning His Word, 
is growing something inside of us. It's growing a shield of faith. It's growing a sword of the Word of God. It's growing a helmet of salvation. Feet that are shod with the gospel. A belt of righteousness. You know what it's doing? That whole description is building the inner man for war. For such a time as this. So that when life comes and hits you in the face, knocks your breath out of you, hitting you in the gut, like I feel right now, like Rob's family probably feels, for sure. It's for these moments that test the strength of that inner man. It's a test of the emergency faith system. And you know what I'm convinced of, my friends? The bride of Christ isn't ready for war. It's not. You see, those of us that are in this movement, we feel that uh, we got something. We know something. You know people that think they know something. And you know what we tend to do? We tend to slice up the people that we think don't know something. We become crusaders for truth. You know what the Father says? You can take this to the bank. When God says, listen, I, I don't need you to defend the truth. You know what I need you to do? I need you to make disciples. I need you to teach people why I came. I don't need you to defend your pet doctrines. I don't need you to defend the Torah. Oh yeah, it's nice. I want you to know it. I want you to know why you believe what you believe. It's important. But at the end of the day, what I'm looking for you to do is feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So let me just make it really clear to everybody out there that would be tempted to say, oh, because I, you might disagree with Rob's theology on this or that, that God took his life because of something that he believed that you didn't believe. Let me correct you in love and to say that God is not in the business of killing people based on pet doctrines because they might be wrong or they might be right. It's not our place to judge. But we can say this. Now I need to go on for a little bit about that because I know there are some people out there that would move in that direction. What we need to do is focus on what we need to focus on right now. And that there's a hurting family that needs prayer and love. They're confused. They're hurt. They've gone through hell and back over the last month and a half. To be told that your husband, your brother-in-law, your loved one is, is gone is not something anybody wants to hear. None of us want to be in that place. I can assure you that if I'm standing up for Rob right now, and if I'm telling you that this man was a good man, put aside the doctrine, put aside the differences, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit was doing an amazing work in his life. He was right where he needed to be. He was right where he needed to be to meet the Father. You know what? I hope that the last message that I give before the Father takes me is the message he was going to give at the conference that he was at. On love and the gifts of the Spirit.
I hope that every one of us can be found someday in a place where we totally recognize that we are not worthy to be called children of God. We deserve the title of child, but we do not deserve to be remotely in his kingdom. And can I just say this in memory of my, my friend? Because we had so many deep, long hours of talks about this topic. But until this movement and the body of Messiah that has embraced the front of the book with the back of the book truly understands the power of the back of the book, and I said that right, and how it fits with the Torah, we will never be given the anointing of God to move off of the, of, of the, of the tarmac. We've got a giant jumbo jet with unbelievable truths. The Shabbat and the power of the Holy Sabbath. The feast days. Not having to eat unclean things. But you know what? All of that stuff, it means nothing. It's a clanging symbol in the ears of God. Every time somebody says something mean or disrespectful, or not courteous to their neighbor, because the highest commandments is to love God and love your neighbors yourself. If you don't have a great marriage and you're not doing all your, you can to, to make it right and to love your spouse like you say you love God, then put aside the Torah and make your, your, make your relationship right first because that's what Yeshua would do. That's what he would say. Put it aside. Stop trying to keep the commandments that I gave you if keeping my commandments is causing you to forget your first love. My friends, listen, man, we've got to get this right. There's millions and millions of people that are saying within themselves, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more. You were one of those once. And many of you, you watched Identity Crisis and that was the something more for you. You realize that, that you are somebody in Christ, that you're part of the commonwealth of Israel that you were lost, and now you're found. In all of our finding the truth, has it really set you free? Oh, let's get personal for a minute, because this is a personal moment. Has it set you free? Are you free from your sin? Are you free from anger and bitterness? Are you free from the hurts that you've had of your past? What are you free from? What has the Torah done for you? The Torah, you know what the Torah is? It's not the horse. It's just the guardrails. It's not the car. The Torah is not going to get you anywhere. Oh yeah, I'm stepping on a lot of theological toes right now. But the Torah is not going to get you anywhere. I'll let that sink in for just a minute so whoever's mad at me can just click off for a moment. It's the Holy Spirit that takes you somewhere. The Holy Spirit is the wind beneath your wings. The wings are the commandments. But they're worthless without the wind of the Spirit underneath them. And it is my prayer that in 2022, as we get closer to moving into the new Gregorian New Year, that we will embrace the wind and we will see this demonic, evil, mean spirit that has crept its way into the Hebrew Roots movement that it will die of starvation because no one wants to give in to it anymore. No more calling names. No more pointing out someone else's faults as if we don't have a forest of logs in each of our eyes. 
And if any of you that are watching this broadcast is righteous enough to say that you are without your own issues, then raise your hand and take my place and take every other Bible teacher and pastor's place and teach us, please, because I'm not there. And I know you're not there. We're all in this together. We've all fallen short. And just in case you've forgotten that that comes out of the New Testament, you know, that part of the book you haven't read in a long time. We've all fallen short of God's glory. Every one of us deserve death. But it's only by the grace of the Father that each one of us exists right now and are breathing. It's because of what he did and what he continues to do. So may my brother rest in peace. May we see him in the resurrection. I know we're going to see him in the resurrection. So Rob, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I know the moment you walked out of your body must have been a pretty cool feeling. Look down and then never look back. However it works on the other side, I want you to know I got your back. I'll be the torch for you. I'll pick up where you were about to leave off. So your last message was going to be on the gifts of the Spirit. So let that be my first. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. And self-control. May we be found on that great day. May we be found with all of those in abundance and more. Let us love like we've never loved before. And that brings joy like we've never experienced before. And joy fills you with peace that passes all understanding. Peace forces patience. But there's no way to have patience without perfect peace. Nothing can move you when you're living in Shalom. Patience brings nothing but kindness. My friends, kindness will transform all the ugliness into goodness. Goodness has its way of forcing faithfulness. Faithfulness by default births gentleness. Gentleness is something we're missing in the body of Messiah today. No more eating of our own. Is gentleness the very byproduct is self-control. And listen to a secret the Spirit is whispering in my ear as we speak. When we have control over ourself, then the Father gives us more control in His realm. When we have self-control, He has control over ourself. The enemy has no authority, no power 
and no way to take advantage of us anymore. My friends, I'm Jim Staley, and I love my friend Rob Skiba. And so I say good night to you and good night to him. And I remember myself. A sorrow only lasts for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Shalom. Man.